So hello fellow coin collectors and today we're looking at some new pickups I got. Uh, so some of these I'll keep, like these two Bhutanese coins. Uh, they are purchased for the collection. Uh, this one I've got heaps of. And we have some Papua New Guinea coins. So if we look at the Papua New Guinea, we have the pre-decimal series from New Guinea. And New Guinea is the northern part of Papua New Guinea. And we have got the independence coinage. So the beautiful coins from New Guinea. So territory of New Guinea when, he, when uh, this area was a trust mandate. And this is Kruger Grey. That's why you have KG. And he's the one who done the Australian pre-decimal coins as well. Uh, looks like it's got a scratch there. So this one has a native imagery, 1936. This is one of the few coins that has King Edward the Seventh. So that's why it's got E. Uh, you get a few from other places. Australia didn't issue them. Got the crown and a duck on top of some water. And these are all got holes in them. At the time, Australian coins did circulate. They were the main currency in Papua New Guinea because these ones have a, a lower mintage. So here we have the frupence. So these are copper nickel, so they're not silver. And you can see, oh, sorry, there you go. Orientate it correctly. 1945, this one has a date on it. And this side, and this one is 1944, 1935. Uh, pretty low grade, but I would say this probably also would have circulated in uh, Papua. And here we have 935, and this one is a mintage of 2 million. So not too rare, not too common. Then we have the 1943. Sixpence has a mintage of uh, 150,000. So quite a low mint coin. If it was an Australian coin with that mintage, uh, it would be actually worth quite a bit. But these ones are not. And this one's George the fifth and George the sixth. That's why the, the uh, fonts are different or the style of writing. And they're also copper nickel. And the only silver coins they issued were these two shillings. So these are a design they were originally going to use for the half penny and penny coin. Uh, but they decided to not do that and just issue them for the shilling and those half penny and one penny are actually quite rare and worth a few thousand dollars so these ones are silver 92.5 percent silver so sterling uh, worth about uh, six to seven dollars in in silver value uh, but these generally sell for about $10 each. So quite nice. This one's been cleaned because you can see it does have some wear on it. And it's just too shiny. Even for a silver coin this age, it's just too shiny. Oh, look at all the scratches on it. So and this one is pretty much what you should find these coins in. Then we have the current coins of Papua New Guinea. So we have the... The one toa, we have the five, got two fives, so the first one is copper nickel, the second one is, uh, sorry, nickel plated steel, and you can see the differences in the metal. So, and 79, 14, then we have the two toa, nice fish on it, so the one and two toa have been a uh, Demonetized in I think 2006. Then we have the 10. So once again, we've got the copper nickel 75, and 210 is the nickel plate. Still, you can see the differences in the metal, even in the reading. So that has an exchange rate value of about five cents. Then we have the 20 toll with the cassowary. So these are current coins. 
this nickel plated steel and copper nickel again and the large one kino coin so this is this hot water crocodile nice large hot coin with a hole in it 975 and you, if you know anything about Papua New Guinea before this they used Australian dollars so 1975, they didn't worry about issuing a one kina to replace the one Australian dollar. They just issued this one kina coin. Has a mintage of two million, pretty low. And but still, because Papua New Guinea is not that popular, uh, it's pretty low value. So the next coins we have are Bhutanese. So this is a twenty tut rooms. So this is dated 1974, so this is food for all, quite nice. And the script you're seeing there is a uh, Tibetan script in the Tsonga language, which is a Sino-Tibetan language, so it's related to Tibetan and Chinese. And here we have the, the what they call the Doye, Doje. I don't know how to pronounce it, uh, but it's Thunderbolt surrounded by diamonds. And the diamond rings represent sovereignty and the, I don't know what the, rip, uh, the actual Thunderbolt represents. Uh, that's right, Wikipedia is a good article, Thunderbolt represents harmony. So that's nice. So this is just the country name, Bhutanese, and also the denomination, also in Zonga. Then we have a, oh, so that one's only worth about, I don't know, you can pick them up for like $2 each. Even though the mintage of this one is only about $1.2 million. It's quite a low mint coin. Uh, quite easy to get. Then we have a half rupee. So this is based on a Kutch Biha half rupee, which was a silver coin. Uh, but then they just kept on debasing it until it came into this bron bronze coin here. So th this could be a low based silver coin, less than 20%, but to me it just looks bronze. And it's all stylized, so originally this is all script. And these circulate up into the 1910s. And quite a nice coin. I've got quite a few of these. Uh, these are probably worth between $5 and $10 each. Then we have the one I actually did want is this one. This is a free Nagoltrum. So one Nagoltrum equaled 100 Tetons. And I would say Bhutan doesn't. They haven't issued coins since uh, this time period. So they don't use their own coins anymore. They use Indian coins. So the Royal Government Bhutan is just the same inscription up here with the denomination as well. And here we have the coat of arms of Bhutan. So this is a Dore uh, above a lotus, so that's a lotus, and the lotus represents purity. Then up the top we have a jewel. Then we have two dragons. So these are more like Chinese dragons. So it has influence from China and India. And the dragons represent male and female, and represent uh, the actual country stand for the name of the country which they proclaim with their great voice well that's just from the wikipedia article and this is quite a nice coin I like this coat of arms Australia should have something like this and then we have the thunderbolt represent harmony lotus purity the jewels uh, sovereignty and this represents a country and on the back we have 
Okay, so the score is Jimmy Singy Wang Chok, fourth king of Bhutan. And these coins here cost between uh, 30 and 40 dollars, so not really a cheap coin. Uh, those ones are probably in higher grade. Uh, I got this slot for like $15, so that's a good pickup. That's why I like eBay. And this coin doesn't have a mintage, so I'm not too sure how many coins are actually produced. So that is uh, my current pickup. The Papua New Guinea coins I'm just going to on sale because I think I got all of them. Uh, I, I usually just take out the best ones and uh, just resell the rest. But these Bhutanese coins are going to into the collection. So anyway, thank you very much for watching my video and have an awesome coin and banknote collecting time. Thank you and goodbye.